Howdy folks, Tex Grabner here with Tex Grabner Outdoors. Hope you guys are ready for Tex Grabner Outdoors Saturday morning cartoon awesomeness because we're going to be making it weird. This is going to be an urban bushcraft type video as well as a review on the Tim Wells Sabertooth Spear Gen 2. First of all, I'm going to tell you right now, I paid for all the Sabertooth Spears that you see in this video and so I can give an absolutely candid review. Starting off, I was initially skeptical, not going to lie, very skeptical in fact, but spoiler alert, I'm just going to tell you right now that I do feel that this is a good spear and more importantly that it is worth the money that you would pay to get this spear. Have no fear, there will be an Illinois archery season 2022. The slow descent into madness will continue and we'll see if this is the year that I break the whitetail curse. If you guys want a discount on all your Trad Life supplies and to show your support for Tex Grebner Outdoors, use the code Tex Grebner in your checkout at Three Rivers Archery. On orders over $100, it will give you free shipping. To be completely honest with you, I'm always filming just little snippets all over the place. Now the question is, do I get enough of them put together in a polished-ish product to actually put out a video. It takes time to do production because I don't just want to make videos, I want to make good videos. Speaking of which, have no fear, there will be an Illinois Archery Season 2022 series this year, even if it's just one video. The slow descent into madness will continue and we will continue to explore the visceral mystery that is the high stakes game of whack-a-mole Illinois Archery Season. So have no fear, you're just going to have to be patient. If you're in the market for some high-end hunting ammunition between 30-06 all the way up to 505 Gibbs, or you want to take a 12 gauge and make it be able to kill a rhino, check out my friends over at Aria Ballistic Engineering. If you want to armor the front of your arrow, use the code TGO10 at ethicsarchery.com to get into the Ethics Archery Insert Out Search system, and that will give you a 10% off discount on your orders at ethicsarchery.com. I take spears very seriously. I probably take spears too seriously because I should focus more on my archery, but it's way more fun to fantasize about hunting dangerous, scary critters that are capable of killing me, but using a spear. It's just what I'm into. Because I take them so seriously, it makes me sad when I'm walking around, let's say, Farm and Fleet, for example, and there's some apocalyptic mole ninja approximation of, quote, a hunting spear or a survival spear. And it's just mole ninja crap that's been bolted onto the end of a polymer axe handle or something, right? Like, it's embarrassing. It's $75 to $100 worth of clickbait that isn't going to do anybody any good. For years and years, I loved the cold steel spears. And what I loved about cold steel spears was that they were a gold standard, right? Like, you knew as soon as you pick up a cold steel spear that you aren't holding a novelty, that you're holding a deadly and dangerous weapon that is real. And it felt real because it was real. Now this isn't a video about cold steel spears. As far as I know, cold steel spears are basically dead. I don't think we're going to be able to get any more of them. And so you, the aspiring spear hunter, and me, the, I'm going to call myself a veteran spear hunter at this point because I've killed two pigs with a Samburu. High fence hunt, but if you've ever tried it, you know that it doesn't get as enough credit for how hard it actually is. But you as an aspiring spear hunter and me as a veteran spear hunter, we need to evolve. So the reason that I brought up cold steel spears was that they were a gold standard. Tim Wells, thank God, has come out with his own line of spears to keep the availability of high quality hunting spears on the market where they aren't necessarily cheap, but they don't feel cheap either. Just like with a cold steel spear, when you pick up this Gen 2 Sabertooth, it is going to feel real. Because it is real. 
it has the same level of heft as a cold steel Sambu rim. And I know that I keep coming back to the Sambu rim, but Buck Medley has killed with a Sambu rim a lot. Lynn Thompson obviously killed with a Sambu rim a lot. Tim Wells killed more shit than smallpox with a Sambu rim. I and Tripper have killed with a Sambu rim. I can say with a level of credibility that the Samburu spear was a gold standard. This spear, the saber tooth, in its new iteration, equals the Samburu in many ways and is more convenient in others. Now it is an improvement on the previous saber tooth design that felt much more whippy and like an odd little dart that is now the Seahawk. I admit, I wasn't a huge fan of the original Sabretooth. It felt too lightweight to me compared to the Samburu. It felt too whippy when I threw it because I wasn't throwing it with enough finesse. However, what I will say is when it comes to using it as a fish spear with the Seahawk points on it, it is excellent and I really like it in that capacity. Normally I don't do unboxings because I feel that they lack credibility. I have already had one of these spears for a while so I ordered some more so here you can see the box this one's empty because it wastes too much time and time is money to actually open the box on film. First of all, the saber tooth blade is very impressive. Doesn't come shaving sharp, but it would be easy enough to polish it into an actual razor edge. You also get a practice point. Now I prefer to practice with the broad head instead of the practice point, but the way that my target is designed, being only one row of compressed hay bales, I can actually just remove the broad head right like that and withdraw my spear. You also get the rear takedown portion of the handle and the front portion of the spear that has a heavier belled section for the takedown socket. And it has a good long transition into the takedown socket so that it's not going to be flimsy. You come with a rubber handle here. It has a tree stand pull rope ring or a harpoon ring for tying off. Actually, no. We're going to put the practice point on and it goes on just like that. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the handle. I find it to be a little bit too thin and I'm not a huge fan of the grip ring here on it, but I'll show you how I've modified mine here in a minute. I'm gonna run and get some electrical tape because the way that this spear is designed for how it balances, or at least that's my guess, it's meant to be used out of a tree stand. So we're gonna tape a GoPro to this and chuck her out of the stand. I am super impressed literally taped a camera to it, climbed up in the tree after I set my target, and did my demo on the first throw. Holding the factory balance point, it is purpose built to be user friendly to the end user to be able to pull it out of the box, climb up in the tree with minimal learning curve, take a couple of practice throws, and be ready to hunt. And that impresses me. The problem is I'm on the lunatic fringe where I like to hunt from the ground. I have done a little bit of customization here. 
this is lacrosse tape, but it isn't just lacrosse tape. I have actually coated it with epoxy. And depending on how this video goes, I may show you. But obviously, it is super compressed, but it's also hardened by coating it with epoxy. It has a lot more sponge to it. Now, if the camera will pick it up, you'll also be able to see that I did my texturing trick, and then I sprayed it with chalkboard paint. I measured out the dimensions of a Samburu handle, because that's what I'm most familiar with. Put it in the correct place for the Samburu handle, for the most part, and then started wrapping lacrosse tape and then figured out when I got to the end of each lacrosse tape roll where the takedown socket was, scored it with a razor knife, and then when I was finally done, at that point, all I had to do was score the last roll of tape that I put on there. I think that I used a total of four sections of lacrosse tape, four rolls, screw it apart, tape off my threads so that I wouldn't get them gummed up with epoxy, plug the takedown hole with a foam ear plug for shooting, and now I have basically mimicked the dimensions for my hand of a cold steel Samburu handle. Now, I don't know if Tim's going to be happy with me for messing with his spear, but it is possible to customize this. And now that I have customized it, I feel a lot more confident in it because I have so much more experience on the balance point that I can get out of this handle. And the handle is still ridiculously far from the head the tip would poke out the other side of a water buffalo, a bison, whatever. It's still going to work. As it stands right now, it's going to ship out from the factory with the handle on the rear portion of the takedown. And as I said, that is super advantageous for throwing out of a tree. However, you can take these off without damaging them, but it takes a lot of effort and physical strength because they are a super tight fit and they're super positive. You can take it off without damaging it and disregard it altogether if you want and do what I did with my epoxy coated handle or you can move it onto the other end of the takedown socket to change the balance point. Now what is nice about this is if you move it on the other end for more advantageous ground throwing, you're going to want to hold it basically like a pub dart, which is what this ring is here for. However, because I have so much more experience without the ring, I have a different throwing style. So we're going to lock this in the vise and I'm going to show you how to get it off of here without messing it up. But the first thing is, you're going to want to untwist this handle to where you take the twists out of the rubber. So before you do this, call slockmaster.com and make sure that they're not going to be mad if you take your handle off. Then twist this a little bit all the way down and make sure that you get all of the adhesive welds underneath broke free and all the twists out of it, and I am not having myself over top of it. I'm going to be beside it so that if it came loose from the vise, I'm still safe. And now I'm going to grab at the bottom and pull up. Now you can see how it's starting to bunch. The reason that I'm pulling from the bottom is so that as it comes up, it's going to get looser. But as you can see, we're making progress and we aren't damaging the spear. 
So we're going to take another bite at this. Pull up. And then work it up. Say if we had an air compressor here at my house, you could shoot compressed air in that, expand it, and pull it right off. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you. This has been a bit like pulling the sword from the stone. It is much easier with an air compressor. If you do want to use the existing rubber handle and just move it, it's much easier with an air compressor and about the only way to get it back on the front portion in whichever configuration you want is to go on the bell end which I know is English slang for something else, but go on the bell end, slide the rubber over. Oh, we're just on a roll here. Put an air compressor hose in this end. It's very helpful to have somebody help you and shoot compressed air into it and work it down. But in my case, I'm basically just going to do another laminated handle, but you can remove them without damaging them. It's just like pulling the sword from the stone. Accuracy is really weird when we're talking about spears. You guys know that I throw at clay pigeons as my target, and I do that for a couple of reasons. Reason one, they're fun to break. Reason two, they're fun for you guys to watch break. But they're also a very representative target size for the vitals on, say, a white tail or a 75 pound hog. So it's a realistically sized target that I'm committing to my lizard brain. Now, I don't want you thinking that because I have made this laminated handle that the factory handles aren't any good for throwing on the ground. The truth is I'm not any more accurate with the factory handle than this or vice versa, but I am so much more familiar with holding the spear like this and this thickness of handle based off all my years on the Samburu. So familiarity and confidence goes a long way toward accuracy, but I don't want you thinking that the factory handle isn't any good for throwing on the ground. And there's also, with accuracy, an irony that it is much more difficult to get close enough to an animal to be able to throw your spear than it is in difficulty of practice to get good enough that once you're at that distance that you can put the spear where you actually want in that animal. There's a different margin of error between hitting a 75 pound pig through the heart and hitting a bull moose through the heart. The bull moose's heart is bigger than the whole damn vitals on the 75 pound pig. So, thing is though, we have a different margin of error with spears than we do with archery equipment because this is a giant blade. Giant blade still has a high mechanical advantage, but it's going to make a wicked hole. We need to be accurate with it, but we have a higher damage percentage, especially because once you get that in there, that is a lot of weight that's hanging off the end of it with cutting leverage. Now when that gets bouncing, it's nuclear level of devastation. So while we want to be accurate, we still need to get close enough. Now you've seen me hit clays at almost 20 yards. I've come stupid close to hitting clays at 20 yards. I'm pretty good at 15 yards, but we aren't talking about 15 and 20 yards. That's traditional archery distance. We're talking sub 10 yards. We're talking sub six yards if you can get that close. Right now, I'm basically eight yards away and we'll see if 
I can break that clay on demand. And I don't know if you're paying attention to how much mechanical advantage this spear has for how far it actually went into that compressed hay. As I said, you can remove the handles without damaging them and you can put them back on in a different position without damaging them. But it's very important that when you move them, that you have the last part going on being the short section behind the grip ring being the last portion that goes on. This would be much easier with two people where one person can push the rubber and the other person can actually inflate the rubber. But right now I'm working with a floor vise with my threads taped off and the air compressor. And this will adjust the balance point to make it more advantageous for ground throwing. The rear section of the saber tooth is now just threaded rod with a ring on the end. And it's very important that you pay attention to how you put this on the front section. You want the long section to go on first and the short section to be the last thing that goes on. You can remove these and move them without damaging them, but I haven't actually tried to take one off after I've got it on the front section. It's very important because the takedown section starts here and then has the bell end under here. So pay attention when you're putting this on that you get it going the right way. The saber tooth in its standard configuration weighs a little bit more than a Samburu. Now the way that you want to hold this, at least as far as I can tell, is pretty much like a pub dart. I've got my handles wrapped and ready to harden up. While the epoxy is still wet, I'm going to throw some sand on here so that I've got good positive texturing. You can see that I've got my ends taped up. What's great about 5-Minute Epoxy, it sets up rapidly. What sucks about using 5-Minute Epoxy is that you don't have time to screw around. So you want to make sure that you've got your shit together before you start. And it's going to take one tube of epoxy per handle section because by the time that you put on an even coat and it's soaked it in and you've thrown sand on it, your epoxy that's still in where you mixed it isn't going to be any good anymore. So just count on using two tubes, one per handle section. It's important that you put on an even coat. As you can see, I'm using a paintbrush, so obviously you're going to need two paintbrushes, one per handle section. And you don't want any clumping. So as you see here, I'm throwing sand at it. And then once I get it coated, I'm pouring sand over it. Now I'm mixed up another set of epoxy and I'm brushing it on. It's going to impregnate a lot into the lacrosse tape, but we still want plenty of coating on the outside for our sand to stick to without being excessive where it's going to pool. Handles, been hardening up overnight, so just going to peel off my tape here, pull that out, let's see how it meshes up. Now normally I'd spray paint this, but I got to be honest, I kind of like this toxic green dirty brown thing it's got going on. I'm going to call that snake green. So I may put a clear coat on here, but I actually really like that color. I know this has been a long video. I get that. I appreciate you sticking with me for it. Truth is, I wanted to make sure that I did one really detailed video of this saber tooth so that you as the consumer and looking to be entertained could not only have some content, but be an informed consumer. Is the Sabertooth Spear worth the money? Yes. High quality blade, high quality threads. And truthfully, you get this spear as it comes, completely functional. It is set up to hunt out of a stand 
can you customize it the way that I have? Absolutely you can, with a little bit of ingenuity and inventurousness. If you don't know what inventurous is, it's a combination of adventurous and being inventive. But I believe that for the price you pay for this spear, you are getting the product worth out of the price. And I say that having bought four of them with my own money, mostly because I grew up with like three arrows shooting into hay bales and so I tend to hoard projectile weapons. That's just, that's a thing. Like when I get a hold of something, I want a bunch of them in case I break them or in case I lose them. Anyways, the point is, I've got four saber tooth spears that I paid full price for. So they don't really owe me anything and I don't owe them anything. I can tell you emphatically that I think that this spear is not only worth the money, but an actual, and it breaks my heart to say this, an actual improvement on the Samburu spear that was the gold standard for basically 15 years. So I hope that this video is helpful to you if you are looking to be entertained or if you were looking to actually get a hold of one of these, you've got an in-depth video review of the Gen 2 Timwell Sabretooth Spear. As always, God bless all my Sports Center of America. Join the NRA to protect our rights. Please got my friends over at 3riversarchery.com. Thank you very much to those of you involved in law enforcement, you good cops out there. And those of you serving in the military ready to die for freedom anywhere. And thanks for watching Tech Scrabner Outdoors.